Ron Martinson of ronmartblog.com. And today I'm going to teach you how to print using Epson luster paper from Adobe Photoshop CS6. And this particular tutorial is for a 4900, but I'll be doing it uh, as with others in other videos as well. So I choose File Print, and the first thing I'm going to do is make sure I have the correct printer selected. Um, I have a mine connected to a network, so the name's a little funny, um, but sometimes yours will, if it's connected locally, it'll just say something like this. So I'll choose my 4900, make sure my layout is correct. I got a preview over here that shows me. I'm having some issues on my Mac with um, the print preview showing me some weird speckles there, so you can ignore that. Everything prints just fine. Um, so my document uh, color handling, I want to say that Photoshop manages colors. And the reason I want to do that is because I want to specify a printer profile. Printer profiles are the key to great prints. And so I want to make sure I have an excellent pro profile. Epson provides an excellent profile. And it's called the Premium Luster Photo Paper Profile for the 4900. Make sure you use the right one for your printer, especially if you have multiple printers. And you'll notice there's one also called uh, Photo Paper uh, 260. That's a little thicker version for rolls. If you have the sheets, then you want to use this one. If you have the rolls, you want to use that one. So I will choose my rendering tint of relative color metric. Um, some people have better luck with saturation, perceptual, and so on for other uh, for some of their prints. Uh, that's fine. I use relative color metric as my starting point and I uh, evaluate the others as needed. Um, if I were to choose match print colors over here, as I selected different rendering intents, uh, sometimes you'll see a little variation of the image on the right side over there. So now I'm also going to have black point compensation always turned on. I want to have my image centered, and I'll explain some tricks about that later. And then generally I like my images um, to do my scaling in Photoshop so that I have a nice even 360 pixels per inch. So I'm going to say do it that way, print it at 100%. If you wanted to avoid any hassles and just make sure things fit to your page without any clipping, you could scale this, which you see in my case is going to change it to 97.72%. Honestly, it will look just fine for most people. Real sticklers will... Um, not like that little tiny bit of uh, pixel compression, but it ends up looking nice for most people's needs. So it's really up to you. So um, now that we have Photoshop in good shape, we also need to make sure we deal with our driver. And you can do these in either order. It doesn't um, matter which one you do. <coughs> so again, um, it's going to set our printer for us. And then we're going to come in here to paper size. Now this is really important. Um, for this one I'm using letter size. It can be whatever you want. But within the type of paper that you use, it's really, really critical. If I hover over US letter sheet, you'll notice that the top margin in the little yellow tooltip there is 0 0.12 and the bottom is 0 0.56. That means I'll have a bigger margin on the bottom than I will on the top. That's usually not what we want, and that's a really big complaint of Epson users. So what you want to choose to avoid that uncentered image is the huge US letter, um, which has a top of 0 0.12 and a bottom of 0 0.12, or use US letter maximum, which says let it bleed uh, a little bit more uh, out to the edges. And that's what I like to use. If you had a roll, then you would choose this one, which you'll notice has a top and bottom of zero margin. Um, and so uh, I'll go ahead and choose maximum and then for my color matching that's going to be disabled because I told uh, Photoshop that I wanted to do that I wanted it to do my color matching paper handling again there's some that's another scaling option like a lot of things in drivers there's redundancy um, and so if you don't want any scaling to happen, then turn this off. Um, I'll usually leave this one on, and then I'll use the suggested paper size of maximum that I specified earlier. It's also right here. You can change it both places. 
I go to printer settings, this is the most important, you'll see that um, I've set it up for a manual feed. You can also use cassette with this paper, but I always prefer to use manual feed for my prints unless I'm doing some large volume work. Um, for media type, this is pretty easy. Just go down to Ultra Premium Photo Paper Luster. Again, there's a Luster 260, which is um, for the roll paper. And then I'll choose 16-bit output. Uh, Super Photo 28, uh, 2880. 1440, honestly, will do just as good of a job and uses a variable size uh, ink droplets instead of fixed size ink droplets. So there's arguments for using uh, 1440 over 2880. Um, but to my eyes, they both look uh, roughly the same. And um, so I just generally will choose to do 2880. You can save a little bit of ink by using uh, 1440. And then high speed, this is to do bi-directional printing where it prints both coming and going as it goes across the paper. And this paper can easily handle that. It dries quickly, so you won't have any issues. Um, if you have a slow drying paper, uh, typically with some of your matte papers, then you would want to turn high speed off. But for this one's fine. I leave these options cleared. Uh, oh, and this is a really nice feature of this driver. It also tell you what the appropriate color sync profile is for this media type. So just to make sure you've done the right thing over here, you can double check yourself right here. I really like that feature uh, on the Mac. We're not using roll paper, so all that's disabled. Advanced media control, these are things that you typically don't want to touch. This is um, only if you have a paper that doesn't uh, go through cleanly. Um, typically your thicker papers, you might sometimes need to adjust this like ex uh, exhibition fiber but we don't need to adjust it here. So I'm going to hit save. Um, just validate everything looks good here, like we said before. And then we can do a file print. Now when I do that, I'm actually going to get a pop-up in my case. And the reason why is because I told you earlier that my image is a little bit uh, bigger than the page size. So uh, it doesn't like that 100%. I can choose proceed and it will print as much as it can. It may clip a little bit off the top and bottom, uh, or I can choose cancel and go back and uh, change those values to make sure that it fits. Um, normally I just do proceed and print in this particular case, but I don't need to print this image. This is just a demo, so I'm gonna choose cancel. I hope you enjoyed learning how to use Epson uh, Premium Luster Paper using Adobe Photoshop CS6 on a Epson Stylus Pro 4900. Thanks for joining me.